So, um, this is me. Um, you'll see a bit more of that later, um, but I just thought I'd chuck the picture in because Thor said it made me look like the Jimi Hendrix of the piano, which I thought was <laughs> a, a, nice, um, a nice title. I'll quote you on that. Um, so, yeah, what are we talking about? We're talking about, obviously, musical instruments, uh, translating things into sound, talking about expression. I was thinking earlier we are talking about translating movements and thoughts because, of course, live coding is... You know, obviously, the way Mariah does it involves a lot of movement. But so we're talking about uh, of obviously different models. We're talking about you know musical instruments, but also communal performance, installations, um, the traditional <coughs> paradigm of kind of I act on this object. Um, and then it's also just thinking about autonomy, um, in that traditionally that's about sort of I can play this and that will affect it. But also now we're talking about autonomy in creating. I can build my own instrument. Digitally, that's becoming much easier because you don't actually have to be really great at building a piano or like uh, the violin maker master we have in our midst. So, you know, actually the skills are kind of becoming uh, more dispersed. Um, what's a kind of good environment for instrument design? Being fluid and getting unstuck. So I so wholeheartedly agree with the sentiments that you're talking about with violin making being stuck. I mean, piano makers, oh my God, you know, it's just, it's amazing. I've tried to talk to all of the major companies and it's just sort of like being hit with a brick wall. Um, you know, there's little things, incremental, tiny, tiny little things. Fatsy only made a fourth pedal, uh, which makes the piano softer in a different way. Um, but, you know, I went to talk to him about upright grounds and he was like, upright? No. You know, so there's real kind of fear of change. Um, <coughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about piano technique just because uh, it's what I do and I suppose we're talking about bodies and things um, so my teacher called it drop spring the idea of dropping in and springing out um, circular wrists the idea that everything's kind of got a shaping to it um, that isn't pushed you'll sometimes see students kind of trying to play loud like this whereas actually loudness <laughs> comes through agility it's about speed so I'm sort of demoing all of this on my invisible piano. Um, we talk about like fingers walking, so weight distribution, just exactly like you have when you're walking yourself. Um, so all of these kind of physical ways of getting to know how to produce the sound, um, you know, and it's very much like, uh, you know, my, remember my teacher talked to me about tennis players and kind of just what is the body capable of? What are, what are our attributes? <coughs> and how are those mirrored in the instrument's attributes? Um, and also this idea of us sort of internally having the imprint of an instrument. Um, I did a quick kind of calculation. I figured by the time I was 21, I'd played the piano for six and a half thousand hours. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just uh, what does that kind of imprint do? And I suppose in the digital realm, uh, I'm always interested in how might we harness um, uh, sort of instrumental... Um, skills that people have have internalized and built up and so I guess we have um, you know in in the realm of new instruments I'm kind of also I think it's valuable to consider old instruments and you know like we've talked about Pete was playing the clarinet for 40 years you know I, I'm probably getting that way with the piano now I think <laughs> um, and and so what's kind of the longevity of things um, at a certain point, I decided to start adding technology to the piano because um, I suppose really I was interested in new sounds and um, I played pieces like Nono, Nono Soferti on the Saran, which is a piano and tape piece. It's really amazing, but um, the frustration of having a fixed part to play with and wanting to figure out how to kind of change that fixed part, but also loving electronic sounds really deeply. Um, and so I did various things, lots of different projects which you can see on my site that's a webcam and a light sensors and a top hat with accelerometers in it and then I got to EMG sensors this is a tiny little film And um, that, for me, was kind of as far as I went, actually. I thought um, this scenario was really interesting. There was kind of 
I call it the ballet in my arms. I was thinking about the dialogue between the muscles that play the piano and the muscles that played the sensor. And they were different, and it was about tension, and it was about holding positions and finding thresholds. And, and it was really fascinating to have literally a kind of physical dialogue within my actual arm um, of these two different controls. And it was so kind of... Um, uh, minute in a way, you know, the, the movements that I would make, and it was all very kind of pianistic and interesting. Um, but there was there was other issues. Uh, just as a quick kind of sideline, I am um, well, <laughs> it took over my life a bit. Set up a festival to explore the physical control of electronic sound, and that still goes on. Um, last week we did an interactive sonic meal, which was quite fun, um, and that was kind of about uh, letting people in a festival play music from musicians in the festival um, in little simple devices that they could just get hold of. And there were some really nice dinners where sort of five friends would come in and play the music they liked. And anyway, so I, I am still digital, I promise. But <laughs> there was, for me, various issues. There was the kind of limitless possibilities thing, and obviously we've heard from Mariah and Adriana talking about how to shape that and, and frame that and make sense of that. Um, for me, collaboration, because I'm not a programmer, um, how to find kind of aesthetic alignment, artistic alignment. Notation's a big thing. Thor, you've been talking about, you know, I um, probably commissioned about 12 pieces, I'd say, with live electronics, and I reckon I've got two scores that you could actually use, you know, and still then there's loads of room for improvisation. And so it's a big kind of area of um, difficulty, I think, actually. And some uh, electronic scores are hilarious, you know, it's just like, like a sort of, I don't know, like a graphic score that makes no sense or, you know, so I think it's a, a, a big um, issue with passing stuff on, you know, how to give other people the opportunity to play the piece. Disconnects, um, amplification and spatialization. I had this really weird moment where I was watching back a gig that I'd done. There's loads of really complex spatialization. There was like 16 channels and it was like whizzing around over the <coughs> audience. And, uh, you know, I turned the page. And it was like, hang on, like, this is such a theatrical disconnect, it's ridiculous, you know, there's all this kind of exciting stuff, but this, on the stage, there's like, it's not happening. Um, so anyway, so I'm kind of, you know, bothered by these things. With the amplification thing, even last week I was at a jazz gig, and there was, we were talking about this last night, an electric guitarist, kind of like this, and his sound was like, you know, and he's like, kind of there like that. And so this is weird, you know, the thing about effort and impact. And, anyway, so, um, so yeah, and then what about the piano itself? Um, and so coming back to sound, I thought it was, you know, deserved a whole slide of its own. Um, so the sounds I was interested in, um, yes, I loved electronic sounds, but I also thought, well, hang on, what's my instrument capable of? And um, I really wanted to play inside, and I was playing inside stuff, um, but what's the problem? Now, uh, this is the moment where we waste 20 seconds getting you to stand up, just for fun. So if you could stand up, even if you've got a computer... And um, basically, if you can uh, just bend, just bend forward from your hips about 30 degrees, and then stick your arms out, and then imagine writing about I don't know 10 emails or something, and um, you soon discover that it's really uncomfortable. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's the standing demo. You were very compliant. Well done. Um, so I thought, okay, so. Damn, I've got a really fundamental problem here. So I've done this really interesting tech stuff, all this stuff, you know, but actually the piano is the problem now. Oh, God, so I've got to solve that. Right, so here's my dad sawing a piano up for me. And, um, and then I made this wonderful diagram and then made the first prototype in 2008. And basically, the idea was simple. Let's get the strings in front of me so I can get to them um, so that's easy. Oh my god, I'm on nine minutes. Okay, so here's uh, the 2014 prototype. And I thought, isn't it lovely how it so resembles an, a, a really old instrument? And how they had that instrument, and they weren't playing inside. And now we're playing inside, and we have these, like, grand pianos that you can't reach. And I thought, that's quite lovely, sort of wrong, you know. Um, so anyway, inside out is what I called it. This is kind of the meaty bit of the talk, which I don't, now don't have time for. Um, but talking about how to practice. Um, so... Uh, classical training is about repetition, it's about kind of defining the thing that you want to do and then doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it until it's perfect. Perfect. Um, but suddenly to have an instrument which is all about exploration, we started to touch on this with the, talk, with the discussion after your talk, Mariah, about, you know, well, hang on, if it's not defined, then how do you ever kind of know, where, <laughs> know when it's stopped? And so I'm, I, I'm kind of interested in 
like how do you create new systems of learning you know actually I was there in a practice room thinking well you know I can't just do an hour of scales anymore like I've got to figure out what are the sort of technical exercises what are the you know there's kind of limitless musical um, explorations that I need to make and um, obviously in different genres that that means different things but for me coming from the classical background it was kind of interesting to go into absolutely kind of open there was no score anymore because I wanted to make my own pieces with inside piano sounds and then also I guess what what are the gestures you know so I'm doing very different things I'm you know scraping the strings I'm plucking I'm playing a bit I'm finding a harmonic I'm using an object putting an object down and so suddenly the gestural language has become quite different it's not this anymore it's kind of you know lots of different things and so the the whole kind of attitude I suppose that I have at the instrument is is quite <coughs> changed um the future piano for me, the first most important thing is that it's going to be really light and really portable. And I can take it to gigs. At the moment, I have to hire a van, and it's a hassle. And uh, uh, so I looked, um, looking in a lot to carbon fibre. I kind of first wrote about this in 2007, and like various people around the world are managing it. There's a lady in Italy who's just made another carbon fibre string frame, which was my like passion for years. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and you know this the connection between instruments and performers and you talked about the fluidity and you know previous societies where scientists and artists actually work together and you know um, so that surely is the the solution there's there's been interesting things you know in the 30s Broadwood made a barless piano which for inside piano stuff would be amazing because there's no bars in the way you know often my students turn up and they're like oh I can't play the piece because I can't stick my sellotape over these five strings because there's a bar in the way um Neo Bechstein's a cool one. If you've seen Reinhold Friedel in Berlin, he play just plug and play. It's got no soundboard, it's just got a bunch of crazy pickups. And there's a fluid piano about tuning. And really quickly, on the back of my piano, um, I said I've got to be able to move it myself. Because it's 600 quid for piano movers return. Whereas if I do it myself, I can get a van for 100. So, um, but I thought, they, but I thought I'd just take the pedals off and then it would hydraulically go down. Um, but they said, no, no, we'll stick a frame on and have a pivot point. And, oh, by the way, if you take this bar away, the thing swings. And I was like, by the way, it swings. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. I've got a swinging grand piano. So, um, so then I thought I'd better get into theatre. And then I was going to talk to you about artistic process and how I think we should all learn from different art forms and, uh, you know, in all the different stages of making a piece. And that's the, that's the squat with the hanging piano. Um, so, yes, anyway, and what a successful instrument might be. But I better stop, right? Because of yes, time. Yes. So, thanks. <laughs>